What is up guys? We're back with another video and today we're going to be talking about the brand new NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4070 graphics card. We have two models right here and we run them through a bunch of tests. So we're going to tell you all about the performance of this card, if it's worth the price and everything like that. So let's go ahead and take a look. The RTX 4070 is the fourth graphics card in NVIDIA's RTX 40 series. Of course, we had the RTX 4090, RTX 4080, and RTX 4070 Ti. Now going over the exact specs on the card itself, it's based on NVIDIA's four nanometer AD104 chip. It has 46 streaming multiprocessors, which is gonna give you 5,888 CUDA cores, 184 fourth generation tensor cores, 46 third generation RT cores, you're gonna get 12 gigabytes of GDDR6X across a 192 bit memory interface. That's gonna give you a total memory bandwidth of 504 gigabytes a second. The base clock is set at 1920 megahertz and the boost clock is set at 2475 megahertz. The TGP of the card is 200 watts and NVIDIA is suggesting a 650 watt power supply. And then on all of the reference cards, you're gonna get three DisplayPort 1.4a connections in a single HDMI 2.1. As far as the two graphics cards that we have here today, these are both MSRP models. So they have that 599 price point. They have those base clock speeds. So the first one is MSI's Ventus 3X model. And I really like this card because it is very much a plain Jane card. No RGB lighting or anything like that. Triple fan cooling solution. It is indeed a two slot card. So if you look at the card, it is completely two slot, which I think a lot of people will definitely appreciate. You do get a full coverage backplate, but it's not metal. It's that graphene that MSI uses on a bunch of their cards. Um, one thing that is pretty interesting about this card is that it does have the eight pin PCI Express power connector instead of the new connector that we saw on all of the previous you know, RTX 40 series cards. Moving on to our second card, we have Zotac Trinity card. And Zotac really changed things up with their RTX 40 series as far as design goes. So they're, all of their cards have this very kind of curvy, rounded edges design. I think a lot of people are either gonna love it or hate it. Again, we have a triple fan cooling solution here. Now this card is larger than two slots. Um, as you can see here, so the shroud and the heatsink go over that second slot. So definitely just keep that in mind with this card. Now you do have the newer power connection. So again, this will come with an adapter in the box. So if you do have an older power supply, you don't have to worry about that. We have a full coverage backplate. This backplate is definitely uh, made of metal, which is nice to see. And what's really cool about this card is that we are getting RGB lighting. So the Zotac gaming logo right here, this will light up with RGB lighting. Getting into testing, here's a full breakdown of our test system.
as we come to the end here, I think the RTX 4070 is really the 40 series graphics card that a lot of people have been waiting for. You know, when the RTX 40 series launched, the prices were very, very expensive. I know that Nvidia really pushed the limit, especially on the 4090 as far as performance goes, but I mean, the RTX 4080 was $500 more than what the RTX 3080 launched for. So with the RTX 4070, you are getting a 70 class graphics card that basically performs the same as an RTX 3080 for just $100 more than what the RTX 3070 launched for. Now, the funny thing is, is that you can actually pick up an RTX 3080 brand new for $599 right now. When it comes to just pure performance without any of the NVIDIA specific features, at 1080p, you're gonna see anywhere from around like 150 to 152 FPS in most titles with the settings completely maxed out. And then at 1440p, you're gonna find, you're gonna get you know anywhere from like 107 to 110, 112 FPS um, and again, in titles with everything completely maxed out. Now at 4K, you're gonna see those numbers drop significantly. That has a lot to do with the narrower memory bus on this card. So this really isn't a card that is gonna work well at 4K. Nvidia isn't really marketing this card for a 4K card anyways. Um, they're marketing it specifically for 1440p. So with those numbers, you're getting a card that's basically performing about the same as an RTX 3080. And this is what I would think we would want to expect, right? We want the next generation card a tier down lower to perform the same as the higher tier card in the previous generation, right? So our RTX 4070 performs the same as the previous RTX 3080, which we are getting here, which I do really like. And the thing that's also really impressive about this is that Nvidia is able to do this with far less power draw. So these cards use far less power than an RTX 3080. For those of you who are wondering how this card stacks up against the next card up, which is NVIDIA's RTX 4070 Ti, it's about 13% slower at 1080p and about 19% slower at 1440p, which really puts the RTX 4070 Ti in a really big pickle because that card is 28% more expensive but at most you're gonna get 28 or you're gonna get 20% better performance. So, you know, you remember that Nvidia did try to sell us that as an RTX 4080 12 gig at 899. They completely rethought that with all the backlash and that card was initially then launched as the RTX 4070 Ti at 799. And I think it's really weird that we have an RTX 4070 at 599 and an RTX 4070 Ti at 799, $200 difference. That's just a little weird to me. I know the whole RTX 4070 Ti debate is like a whole, but we can make a whole video on how big of a mistake that card was. But I think that at least with this card, Nvidia is doing a good thing by making it at least more reasonable cost. And again, that's why you have that big, you know, $200 difference between both cards. Now, of course, we can't forget about all of the great NVIDIA features that you are going to get with this card. You know, we are going to get real-time ray tracing, but I think the big one with the 40 series is DLSS 3.0. There are a bunch of games that do support DLSS 3.0, and NVIDIA says this is one of their biggest breakthroughs in their technology in quite a while. And, you know, just to give you an example, we run the 3D Mark DLSS feature test and that's going to render a scene at 4k when we don't have dlss 3.0 turned on it renders the scene around like 22 24 fps and then when we turn it on it renders that exact same scene at over 80 fps so that's going to give you the ability to turn a card that's really marketed as a 1440p card all the way up to a 4k card in titles that do support dlss 3.0 now, when it comes to the cards that we were able to take a look at here at launch, MSI's Ventus 3X and Zotac's Trinity card, I think both cards are great. I think for a lot of people who want a completely no frills card, right? You get the MSI card, 
no RGB lighting. It is truly a two slot card. So if you have, you know, you don't have a whole lot of room, this is truly two slot. You don't have to worry about going into the third slot or anything like that. You get the MSI card. If you're looking for more of a larger card, the Trinity card definitely is it. And I'm really impressed that we get RGB lighting and a full metal backplate on this card. It does appear, at least from the leaks that we've seen, that there is going to be a reference version of this card. And I think also NVIDIA did make a really big push to have manufacturers have an MSRP card at launch. So again, both of these are MSRP cards at that $599 price point. Now, the interesting thing is going to be is if, you know, Amazon, Newegg, all these places, Best Buy, they have availability of all of these cards, right? There's not just gonna be 10 and then you have to get the more expensive card because again, when you get into the more expensive cards, not the MSRP models, that can bring you all the way up to the next card, right? We have seen aftermarket cards cost as much as $150 over the MSRP. So we'll see if you know these manufacturers will keep a steady supply of all of these cards. We really hope that they do. But I think overall, the RTX 4070 is a really good card. If you're building a new system, you're gaming at either 1080p or 1440p, and it's gonna be a good upgrade from the 10 or 20 series. I really don't think it's gonna be all that impressive upgrading from a 30 series card or anything like that, and that's kind of expected. But I do think you are getting more of a value out of this card than some of the other RTX 40 series cards. Now, if you have any questions about the RTX 4070 or these two cards that we took a look at today, go ahead and leave a comment below. Also, we will have links below where you can not only pick these cards up, but to our individual reviews of both of these cards. Now, if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up, and we'll see you guys in the next video.